a Dear Media original podcast. Hi, welcome to Good Instincts. I'm Shira Barlow, but you may know me as the food therapist. Join me every Monday through Friday for bite-sized episodes designed to help you close the gap between where you are right now and where you want to go. This should feel good, like really good. And it will, I promise. So yesterday was Valentine's Day, continuing our theme through the week. And today we're talking specifically about food and relationship dynamics because they really do come up. So we asked listeners if they had any specific questions in this sphere and the questions were so good. Let's get into it. Evelyn from Miami says, my boyfriend loves to feed me. He brings me elaborate cheese boards while I'm finishing up work before dinner. And it's so sweet. And then I end up eating dinner too. And all of it together is a lot, but I don't want to hurt his feelings. Okay, first of all, this is so, so sweet. Some people really do show their love through food. I am one of those people. I love feeding and serving food to the people I love. It makes me so happy. I'm definitely not force feedy about it, but I do know that it is okay to set boundaries. And I think the thing here is that he'll understand. We're not shutting down his midday offerings, but maybe let's change the type of thing that he's bringing you. So it sounds like this is a very calorie dense spread and then you have dinner right after, which altogether is a lot. So could this be more of like a farmer's market crudite thing with dips or like tea, something that doesn't have to be a super calorie dense thing, but still like he gets to bring you something special that he made. Maybe it's even like tea with like fresh mint. Like that would make me so happy if I were on the receiving end of that. Of course, if you want the cheese and the crackers and the nuts, you know that I'm always going to encourage you to really enjoy that and sit with it. But if it's more a thing about accepting the way he wants to show love for you, let's just switch up the offering so that you can stay on track. The next is from Christina from Los Angeles. She said, my boyfriend and I have two different meal types eating preferences. He's more plant-based and I'm a big meat eater. It can be hard when we're cooking at home. So this really does happen in relationships. And I do find that some people can get bummed feeling like the meal was less intimate if you're not like eating and sharing all the same things. I understand what they mean in theory. It's kind of like the Larry David curb your enthusiasm thing where basically I think he got divorced because his wife stopped drinking coffee. She was like, I'm going to drink tea or decaf. And he was like, it's literally not the same. So I understand the spirit of it. But at the same time, I think it's cool to not be carbon copies of each other. And I think when it comes to home cooking, what you can really do is focus on the sides, making like really bomb sides that you both will like really enjoy savoring together. I think that that's really bonding and you guys can go by your own tastes and preferences. I'm very into a like caramelized cauliflower with tahini and pine nut type of thing, but it really depends on what you guys are into. Our next question is from Rachel from Boston. She said, I'm still in the honeymoon phase with my partner. And every time we're together, we go all out, big meals and desserts and drinking. It's so fun, but I'm gaining weight and I don't feel great about it. Thank you so much for sharing this. I think so many people can relate to getting like really loved up and really just going for it and everything is fun and celebratory. The thing about it is that I always honor the season that the person's in. So if you were in a season where you're like, listen, I'm all loved up. I'm doing this thing. I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I'll see you on the other side of it. And it was like thoughtful. That would be fine. But what you said was that part didn't feel great to you. And I think the reality is that not every time you go out has to be this huge celebration. Like I think that sometimes people equate the actual like decadence of the meal with how like fun and exciting and sexy the whole thing is. And I don't think that's true. And I don't think that's real life. So I think for you, it's potentially about flipping the script and knowing that it can still be totally fun and intimate and sexy to share a meal that maybe isn't the most decadent meal. And you are skipping the dessert and it doesn't have to change the dynamic for you guys. And also, I'm very happy for you. The next question is from Haley from New York. She said, I get freaked out by eating on dates. Any tips? I'm so glad you mentioned this because I think a lot of people feel this way. So in my mind, it's less about what you're eating on the date and more about what you're eating before the date. 
especially if drinking is involved. And I really just mean like if you're going to be drinking on the date, it is very helpful to have some kind of healthy fat earlier in the day, whether that's nuts or olive oil or salmon. That fat helps slow the absorption of alcohol and then it's less likely to irritate your stomach, which is something that you don't want when you're on a date. And I think the reality is a lot of people really like getting wined and dined, but then end up just kind of getting wined. And that's not like a great feeling for a date. So healthy fat is your friend. And then I also think, you know, there are things that we know don't like agree with us most of the time. And a lot of times we'll like dip our toe in a little bit because we're like trying to figure out if the thing that bothers our stomach is going to bother us that day. I think that sometimes when you have nerves that are flaring up with something that could potentially irritate your stomach, I don't really think that that's probably worth it on that day if it's something that's like really important to you. Some people also will avoid doing like excessively gassy foods like cruciferous veggies, like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. But if you eat those things all the time and you're fine, you should be fine. The one thing I do recommend avoiding though is like the sugar-free products with the sugar alcohols because those really can do a number on your stomach. And then that paired with like first date jitters doesn't seem like a great mix for a date. And lastly, we have Dylan from Austin. He said, I'm going through a breakup that kind of wrecked me and my appetite just isn't there. I'm so sorry. I'm a really big believer in listening to one's body. But I think there are some cases like this where we kind of have to go through the motions even if we're not feeling like it. There was this therapy Jeff clip from last week where he was talking about things that he does as a therapist when he's in a funk. And one of the things he said was that he really tries to go about his day as regular as he can. And the feelings all get to like carry through with him. Like he's not going to like mask those feelings, but he's going to go through the day. And I think that that might be the right thing for you here. I was recently a guest on a podcast where the guy was talking about how he would kind of go all out and make things really special if he had a significant other, which he really wanted. But for himself, he wasn't going to do that. Like he wasn't going to make something special for himself. He wasn't going to do something nice for himself. And I think for you, maybe the thing that would be the most special thing for you to do right now is to like double down on self-care in that way. So I don't know if you're someone who cooks or not, but if you are like making something really special that like took time and energy for just you for the purpose of taking really good care of yourself, And maybe it is ordering in and ordering something that feels really good for you and that would kind of perk up your taste buds and like putting it on a plate, eating it with real silverware and enjoying it because you're worth it. So as we know, relationships take real thought and care. And when you consider how much our relationship food overlaps with our romantic relationships, it's even more so. And like any relationship, it's about getting to the core of it and listening and using the information you're given to pivot forward healthfully. If you have any questions around food within romantic relationships, I would really love to hear from you. Submit your questions to me on Instagram via the DMs. It's Shira underscore RD. In keeping with this week's theme of love, tomorrow we're going to play a very fun game of smash or pass with pleasure boost products. Thank me later. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for listening to Good Instincts. Hosted and written by me, Shira Barlow. You can find me on Instagram at Shira underscore RD. Good Instincts is a Dear Media Daily produced by Katherine Hugh. If you like this episode, please make sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate us.